Hello everyone, God bless you and praise the Lord for this beautiful day. <clears throat> We're here at another Friday to do our Friday Bible study with Elder Milton Andrew. And before I move out of the seat and turn it over to him, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to say a few things. I speak a lot about family because it's very important to me as I'm sure it is for you as well. The past few lessons, Elder Andrew has talked about being prepared uh, prepared people for a prepared place that God has for us. And it caused me to stop and think about, we talk about being prepared for our eternal um, place with the Lord, but before we do that, we have to be prepared to make our physical transition. And it just reminded me that so many of us aren't really ready for that. The time is near, things are happening, all we have to do is look around us to know that unexpected consequences happen with decisions that we make this day. And it's not just for any one person this message is for, but it's for our family as well. I want us all to be better prepared to make our transition from this life. We need to talk to our families. Ask them how they feel about death and dying. You may get some interesting responses, especially from your young people. They need to know what's expected of them as well. And they need to know something about what your feelings are. You know, when death comes to our door, we're always surprised and we're always ill-prepared Ill to do the next step. People ask us, what are we gonna do now? Where do they wanna be buried? Where do they want to have their uh, possessions uh, placed? And our first response is, well, I'm not sure, or I don't know. Let us take this time and communicate with our families and our loved ones, even if they're not nearby. We know with COVID, we have a lot of restrictions, but guess what? You can get a Zoom number and have a Zoom family meeting. Ask those questions. Find out where they're leaving the papers and where the, uh, the special place is where you place the folder with all the information because things happen quickly and unexpectedly. We had a friend who left us very suddenly. She had not been ill and it really stunned us, but something was wonderful at that funeral. They had her name listed as the person doing the eulogy. We wondered how could that be? It turns out they had recorded her doing ministry and they played her words. We were so happy to see that video and it made me think about the gentleman by the name of Alvin, um, who did a wonderful video years ago. He wrote the books, Alex Haley wrote the book on roots. They turned it into a movie. But what he taught us was that we could go to our family members with a tape recorder, record them telling us about their history. Every family needs someone who has the oral history or a video or something that we can turn to and get information. So now we are in this modern time, we're not using tape recorders, but we have smartphones that we can turn on, we can talk to someone, have it recorded, make a video, do all kinds of exciting things. You young people know how to take this technology and make it work for your families. Get the information from one another, share. Make sure that you are prepared on this side to go to the other side. We want to get our physical presence in order so that when we make our transition to be with the Lord, we won't leave a mess behind us. Every one of us has a story that we can tell. If not immediate family, we know someone who at the time of death, people showed up and showed out. Things were not good and it destroyed the family. We want to avoid that. Take time, talk to your loved ones, let them know what your feelings are, find out what they want, and be prepared to move to the next phase. Thank you for being patient with me. God bless you. Elder Andrew is going to come and he's going to talk to us this time. We're moving on to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, a spiritual connection. Thank you. I start to bring us some water, you all, because uh, Sister Girl was laying down some good stuff that all of us can digest and live by. We certainly thank God for 
the wisdom that this lady has and she keeps me on target because she bring up these type of things. I forget about all of that, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm so busy about today that I forget about getting those papers together. But we've all seen how people have, you know, tore up the, the house trying to find insurance papers and things of that nature. Let's be wise, you guys. Once again, praise the Lord to all of you. We certainly thank God for this privilege once again to come and speak a word of God to the people of God. Uh, we thank God for this day, a day that we have not seen before, and we pray that God has a word. Um, not only are we preparing ourselves for the next life, but we want our loved ones to be saved. We want to be intelligent enough to speak the word of God in a systematic way that they may understand, they may hear and receive. So today we, we go before God in prayer, asking him for his directions. Father God, in the name of Jesus, help us today, Lord, to be what you've calling us to be. We realize, Lord, coming on here to speak to your people is not about a joke, but it's serious, Lord, because we are talking about life or death. God, help us, Lord, to be that instrument, Lord, that you breathe through today. Let your words be mighty, Lord. Let them enter into hearts that refuse to let it come in, Lord. Break down the door, Lord. Open up the way and speak life unto your hearers. God, we bless you, praise you, and lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, once again, we come before you and we just want to talk to you for a few minutes today about the Holy Ghost, our spiritual connection. The Holy Ghost is our spiritual connection. When we look at the last lessons that we were teaching, dealing with eternity, we said about death, that it was three different kinds of death. We knew physical death was the separation of one's spirit from one's body. When he goes to the ground, we have a funeral that's physical death. We realize that his body goes back to dust and his spirit goes to be with the Lord. But today we want to talk about spiritual death and eternal death. Spiritual death is when you are alive and your spirit is separated from the spirit of God. In other words, you're walking and talking, you're living and you're doing your thing, but you don't have the Holy Ghost. You don't have the spirit of Christ. And you know that the Bible says in Romans 8 and 9, he that has not the spirit of Christ is none of his. My brothers and sisters, you don't belong to Christ if you don't have his spirit. That's as simple as I can place it. And if you die without the spirit of Christ, then you would be in eternal death. And that's eternal separation from our God, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus came here that we may have life. He came with a plan. Not only did he demonstrate his plan, but he chose 12 disciples and he fed them. He poured into them that they may pour into us. And he gave us a plan. I think one of the greatest revelations, my brothers and sisters, that I received is that when I looked and saw that everything that I saw or everything that I see was made by something that I cannot see. In other words, this natural world, the trees, the sun, and the moon, was made by a spiritual world. That leads me to know that the spiritual world is greater than the natural world. In other words, everything that you need doesn't come from the natural world. It comes from the spiritual world. Can't you hear God saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The kingdom of God is a spiritual organism. It's the spiritual body of Christ. It's not here. 
Although we try to make connections here, we try to connect with important people. I know the governor, I know the mayor, I know the pastor, I know the president, and all of these connections are good but they won't get you where you need to get, where you're trying to go. The connection that you need is a spiritual connection with Christ. Even your enemies does not dwell in the natural. On this earth, your enemies are spiritual. For Ephesians tell us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers and darkness of this world, against uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Your enemy comes from the, the spiritual realm. So God, Jesus came to give us a spiritual connection out of the natural into the spiritual. And I'm telling you that if your life consists of just what you see, on this earth, then you're a miserable person. If all you have is to live and to die and to say goodbye, holla, holly, and that's it, if you think that's, that's, that's great, you are in serious trouble. But we are looking for a home, another body not made by hands. We're looking for that body, that eternal body to be with Christ in heaven forever. For the other alternative is to be with your enemy in hell forever. So the Holy Ghost is our spiritual connection. Don't you hear the uh, Jesus teaching of the apostles and he said, uh, say our Father which are in heaven. Man, our blessings, the source of our blessings is in heaven. While we're trying to please man and trying to get brownie points, my thing is to please God. My thing is to walk up right before God because he said, no good thing would I withhold from them that do that. My thing is to do what God has asked me to do. That means I'm going to respect my pastor. That means I'm going to respect my wife. That means I'm going to do everything that the Bible asks me to do. That's my spiritual connection. It even shows us in our finance. Man, when, when, you, when I wasn't saved, man, I wasn't giving my money to the church. But in the spiritual realm, God says that he that give it bountifully shall reap bountifully. There's a sowing and reaping principle of God that you can't find in the natural it's all in the spiritual. We do things because we have a spiritual connection with God. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. When you get Christ, the Holy Ghost in you, you begin to think like Christ. You begin to see like Christ and you begin to act like Christ. The Holy Ghost is our spiritual connection. Now, when I was looking at this lesson, my brothers and sisters, I saw that the spirit of promise, which is the Holy Ghost, is mentioned so many times. I'm wondering how anybody who called themselves a child of God can walk around here without the spirit of God. How anyone can deny the authenticity of what the word is saying about the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. The spirit of promise, it, the Holy Ghost was promised in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. You remember the scripture, Job 2 and 28, that says, in the, uh, in the last days, I'm gonna pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And then on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples received the Holy Ghost, and all of the nations, the men that represented all the nations were there. They said, man, these men must be drunk on new wine. And Peter stood up and said, no, no, no. This is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Man, this was promised. This is a promise of God. A promise is a commitment, either in writing or orally, 
that someone says and commits to do or to not to do. When God promised to send his spirit, man, don't you let anybody take away your promise. For the promise of God is yea and not nay. So God said, I promise to send you my spirit. Glory be to God. What spirit? The same spirit that said in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God says, let there be. And guess what? There was. For the word of God goes forth and it cannot return unto him void. Whatever God says, it has to come. So God says, I promise you, I'm going to send you my spirit. We see also in Isaiah 28, Isaiah said, with stammering lips and other tongues, would I speak to this people? Well, then in the book of Corinthians, Paul stands up and he was telling the people about spiritual gifts, particularly speaking in tongues in the church. And he said, look, with stammering lips and other tongues, would I speak to my people and yet would they not hear me? My brothers and sisters, God is speaking. God is sending signs and wonders. If everything that the Bible tells you about the Holy Ghost isn't enough to get you to say, Lord, help me make sure that I understand this because without the spirit of Christ, you're none of his. And then you look at the gospels and Matthew 3 and 11, he says, when Jesus comes, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Mark 1 and 8, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Luke 3 and 16, when Jesus comes, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And John 1 and 33 says, is he is, Jesus is him that would baptize with the Holy Ghost. Here are the gospels, you all, the power of God unto salvation, and all of them prophesy about the Holy Ghost coming. So you need to be looking for this Holy Ghost. You need to be making sure that you have this Holy Ghost. My God and my God, nothing else, tongue, um, speaking and uh, giving to the poor, all of these things are good, but you got to have the equipment because God is about to take you into space and you need a space suit to go through one atmosphere to the another, to go to that place they call heaven. When Jesus came, look what Jesus said in John 14 and 26. He said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. This is a promise, you all. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said to you. The Holy Ghost. Then Jesus said in John 15 and 26, he said, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, that's the promise, even the Spirit of truth, Glory be to God, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And then he said in John 16 and 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient, it's, it's important that I go, Jesus is saying, for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. My brothers and my sisters, it was more important for Jesus to leave and the comforter to come than Jesus to stay and the Holy Ghost not come. Why? When Jesus was on the earth, he only dealt with those people that was in his atmosphere, his environment. But when Jesus left and came back and sent the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost can now deal in Every child of God, whether it's in America, whether it's in Africa, he's all over the place because now as a spirit, he can be in more places than one. It's expedient that I go. For if I don't go, the Holy Ghost will not come. And brother and sister, we needed that promise. God know we needed the promise because without the promise, we cannot be the child, the body of Christ that he's coming back for. 
The Holy Ghost was first outpoured on the day of Pentecost. Now hear this. Before the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, verses 1 through 4, there was no outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Well, people say, well, uh, uh, Elizabeth was, uh, John was filled with the Holy Ghost in Elizabeth's belly. That's not the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That's not the spirit of promise. In the Old Testament, holy men moved, wrote as they were moved by the spirit of God. That's, that's, that's a totally different dispensation. But for this dispensation of the church, you have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost uh, and the disciples, check this out, they were commanded, they were commanded to tarry at Jerusalem. They were commanded to wait. Let's look at Acts 2. Just for a second, the disciples, Jesus said, tarry thou in Jerusalem. They were commanded. I, I mean, this was not, the Holy Ghost was not something that, you know, you can miss the moment. He said, no, tarry thou in Jerusalem. Acts, I believe, uh, 1 and 4. This is what Jesus said. Praise the Lord. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. My God, this promise, this Holy Ghost is about to come on this earth, and we can be a part of it. Jesus is sitting there back. The promise of the Lord, which says he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. It's a promise, you all. And then in Luke 24 and, and verse number 49. Luke 24 and verse number 49. Look what it says. And Jesus said to the disciples, that's after the resurrection again, he said, and behold, I send the promise of the Father unto you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. You see what I'm saying? These are men that walked with God, but they weren't prepared to go and work for God until they were endued with power. In Acts 1 and 8, here's what it says about the power. He says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. My brothers and sisters, this is something that you need. This is a part of what God has planned. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody, talk you out of receiving the promise of God. In the book, Matthew 16 and 13, he told Peter, upon this rock, upon you, Peter, I'm going to build my church. And he said that the gates of hell should not prevail against him. I don't care what comes up, that truth, the Holy Ghost is still going to be coming and he's still going to be on earth until God comes back for the church. The gates of hell should not prevail against it. And Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And on and in the book of Acts, Peter took those keys and he gave them to the people. And he said that they had to repent. They had to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins, and they had to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Acts 2 and 39, here's what he said. After he told them that, he said this. He said, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all of them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. My God, if you got the Holy Ghost, you got the promise of God. You got the spirit of God living in you. 
My God, you think differently from the world. You act differently from the world. You can tell the tree by the fruit. If you open up your mouth and cussing, if you found every night in a club, if you are fornicating, committing adultery, if you're getting high, you can't be doing that with the spirit of Christ because now you got a spirit that's leading you into all truth and to all righteousness. So my brothers and sisters, it is so, so important that you all hear this and be prepared to share this because people need to know that if they don't have this spirit, they have another spirit and only this spirit is going to be able to take them from earth to glory. My brothers and sisters, this demon that we are dealing with, he is sly, he is deceptive. He has convinced the world that the Holy Ghost is nothing, that you don't need it. He has convinced the world that the evidence and the signs that God has given is false. If you want to see deception, look at the country of America today. Half of them believe in our president and half of the population don't believe. The half, one of these halves are deceived, but each one of these halves will fight you down to the ground to prove that they are right about their convictions about this man. That's what deception looks like. He takes right and he makes it look wrong and he takes wrong and he makes it right. If God has promised this, if God has talked about this Holy Ghost all through the Gospels, all through the book, the Bible, talking about the Spirit, even in Ezekiel, he talked about the Spirit that's going to come and, and sprinkle and change the heart of man from stone to flesh. It's prophesized, my brothers and sisters. It's a promise. I'm promising that I'm going to come. And, and, and the book of Acts, it says that I, I'm coming to gather me a people from the Gentiles for my name's sake. We the Gentiles, my brothers and sisters, God did not forget about us and we shall not let this promise, this gift get away from us without seeking God while he's near and letting God demonstrate to you the power of God living in you that makes a difference. It's between life or death. So you see that the birthday of the church came in fruition in Acts, the second chapter. For uh, my, my man Peter, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into the one body. Whether we Jew, Greek, whether, whatever we are, we are baptized into Christ's body. How do I know it's Christ's body? Because in Colossians 1 and 18, Jesus said, and, and God has made him the head of the body, which is the church. You are a part of the church when you are baptized into the church. That's why John says in, in, in John 3 and 5, except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, the body of God the church of God. My brothers and sisters, hear me. Accept means unless you do this, you ain't gonna make it in. Why sit here and die when there is a Holy Ghost that God has sent to give you life and to give you life abundantly? Let's look at this here. The evidence that one has received the Holy Ghost, plain and simple, is that they speak in other tongues. Now, I ain't talking about no tababi. I'm talking about a language, you all. One of the problems that I found in the churches today is that as soon as they see people crying and as soon as they see their lips trembling, stammering lips, and they say, bada, they say they got it. Man, let those people alone. Let them let the Holy Ghost have his way. Don't pull them off the altar. Let them stay there until they speak another language. My brothers and sisters, it sounds crazy, but the things of God, God has took the foolishness of the cross to confound the wise. You got to be dumb 
to follow Christ. Because if you're smart, you're going to be smarter than Christ. I always want my wisdom to be under the wisdom of God. And if God said it, that settles it. I believe it, I receive it, and I'm going to obey it. Look at here. When you talk about tongues, there are three types of tongues spoken of in the Bible, and we need to know that. Well, let, let me go to this. In every case, except one, in the Bible, when they received the Spirit of Christ, they spoke in other tongues. I think we need to see this because this can't be what man is saying. This is the Bible. It's the lamp unto our feet. It's the light unto our path. This, these scriptures are what we are eating on to lead us and to guide us to the place that we are trying to get to, which is called heaven. Look at Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. This is when the Holy Ghost came. First time, this is when the promise came. This is what Jesus and the Father has been promising. And here it is here. The former, no, Acts 2 verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost, that's a feast day, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, my brothers and sisters, Tongues, it's not really about tongues. It's about the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ coming into you. That's the big issue. And God is saying, when I come into you, I'm going to give you a sign by speaking out of you in a different language. The man, no one can tame and control the tongue of a man. No, not even man. But in the instant that God comes into you, he breaks that. He breaks that principle of the universe and he began to take over your tongue and speak in another language. That's one sign. The other sign is the joy. My brothers and sisters, I've been high on marijuana. I've been high on cavassier. I've been high on weed. But the high from receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, God coming into me, is like nothing that I can describe. It's so real. It's so genuine. You're so happy. The whole purpose of your whole life has come into your face. This is what I've been living for, to be reconnected to Christ, to wit that God Jesus, God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. Man, I came back to God. My God, God and I are one. Lord Jesus, that's what the Holy Ghost brings. He brings power now. He don't just give you the Holy Ghost to, to run and shout, but he gives it to you to witness, y'all. He wants witnesses. He want, And you witness more than just going out on the street corner with a megaphone. You witness with your life. Your family should see that there's a change. Your neighbors should see that there's something different. You can't get the Holy Ghost and be the same, my brothers and my sisters. It's a difference. My sisters and when I went home with the Holy Ghost to tell my mama and my sisters about this gift, they were looking at me and say, man, I, I heard him talking in the room. He didn't change. He used to be angry all the time and you'd be scared to be around him. Now he is a different person. Old things pass away and behold, all things are become new. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. So when the Holy Ghost came, he came speaking in other tongues. And then the script, the scene moves to Acts the 10th chapter. When Peter goes to Cornelius' house, the Gentile, the centurion, and while Peter was yet speaking the gospel message to him and his household, the Holy Ghost fell and they began to speak in other tongues. 
Glory be to God. And then he takes the scene to Acts the 19th chapter to the disciples of John the Baptist the, in, the, in, in Ephesus, the Ephesians. And, and, and he asked them, he said, have you all received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said, man, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Ghost. He said, well, what baptism you were baptized in? He said, we're baptized in John baptism, baptism unto repentance. He said, John only told you about that to prepare you for the Christ to come, who will prepare you for the spirit of promise to come. And, and that's what's happening with, with us, hon. We got a lot of people who believe in Jesus Christ. We got a lot of people who love the Lord, you all. I know them. I got some in my family. I, I got friends who love the Lord. They love him. But nobody has told them about the Holy Ghost. Nobody has told them about a baptism in the name of Jesus. Nobody has told them about the necessity of repentance. Nobody has told them about how important it is to live holy. And because they have not heard it, they have not acted on it. So they say, well, we have not even heard about it. And that's why we, children of God, who God has filled with the Holy Ghost, we have to become witnesses we talk about everything on, on our, in our programs and our, in our churches, and, and we yet to tell people that they need to be born again. What kind of mess is that? To get the whole world. I done taught you how to get a new car. I've taught you how to get a new house. I've taught you how to do X, Y, and Z, but I've never told you how to be born again. My God, I got the answer to God on that. But this old country preacher, I'm going to tell you, whether you tell somebody else, I can't say. But I'm going to tell you, you need this Holy Ghost. It is your connection, a spiritual connection with God himself. So we see that every time the Holy Ghost came, they came speaking in other tongues. And, 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 and the thing that you need to know that in the Bible, there are three times. And if I teach you the gift of the spirit, I, I, I'm going to teach you and talk to you about the gift of tongues. But there's three kinds of entering, of speaking in tongues found in the Bible. There is tongues to enter the church, Acts 1, Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. That's how you enter the church. For one By one spirit are we baptized into one body, which is the church. So you speak in tongues when you get the Holy Ghost. Now, I need to tell you, and I don't want to confuse you, that you can speak in tongues one time and never speak again. That's the requirement is to speak in tongues as evidence that you've got the Holy Ghost. But there's another tongue that comes from the Spirit. It's called the gift of the Spirit. Once a person have the gift of the Holy Ghost, once you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost brings nine different gifts and they are called the gifts of the spirit. With the Holy Ghost, you can either have the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of healing, the gift of faith, or you can have the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues is not given to everybody, but it's given to as the spirit of God see fit, but it can be given to everybody that wants it. It can be given by you praying to God for it. For the gift of tongues is a tongue that you use to pray. Another tongue is a tongue that you pray with. Paul says that he that's speaking in another tongue prays to God for no man understands it and he edifies himself building yourself up in the Holy Ghost. You can pray in tongues. And man, it's a wonderful experience because sometimes I don't talk in English. I just get into the spirit and I begin to pray. The Bible says in Romans that we don't even know what to pray for, but the spirit make intercessions for us and praise the prayer for us because the spirit of God knows the mind of God. So when I begin to pray, in other tongues, in prayer, 
My, the spirit, the Holy Ghost that's in me is praying a perfect prayer. He could be praying for my wife who's on the highway in a storm. He could be praying for my kids who are in danger in Texas and in, in, in Michigan. He can be praying for my, my sisters. He can be praying for anybody because he knows the mind of God. So if you want a perfect prayer, pray in the spirit. And then the third way that the tongues were used, they were used to prophesize, to pray, to speak in the church. And this is when Paul went into the church and corrected them because they were preaching in tongues. They were praying in tongues. And Paul said, look, in the church, it is better that you speak, you prophesy than to speak in tongues. In other words, if you prophesy, that means if you preach, if you talk about the goodness of God, if you preach the Bible, people would understand what you're saying and they would be edified. And everything that you do in the church has to be done for the edification of the members in the church. So when you come in the church, you come speaking in English and talking about the goodness of God. You can't come speaking in tongues unless somebody in the church has the gift to interpret your tongues so that the meaning, the, the message that God is sending, everybody would hear and everybody would grow from. So the tongues come speaking in other tongues, but you also can have a gift of the spirit that gives you a prayer language, that gives you a language that you may want to prophesy with, coupled with interpretation. The baptism of the Holy Ghost identifies us with Christ's resurrection. Remember, Christ died, he was buried, and he was resurrected. When we repent, it is a form of death. We turn away from ourselves and we turn unto God. We turn away from this world and we say we want it in the next, we want to live according to the spiritual world, the things of God. And then after a man dies, he should be buried. So when we are buried in water, in the name of Jesus Christ, he takes away our sins. And remember, we are emulating his death, his burial. And as Christ was resurrected from the grave, you, are, I, you and I are resurrected from our dead life to the newness of life. That born again experience, that walking now with eyes that you can see and ears that you can hear what the spirit of the Lord is doing and what he is saying unto you, the church. So the, the, the Holy Ghost is a type of Christ's resurrection. The Bible says in Romans 6 and 5, we shall also in the, be in the likeness of his resurrection. Not only when we die, but also while we are alive. We've been born again. We've been resurrected. Old man is gone and a new man comes up. Man, I'm so glad that I've been born again. I'm so glad that I got the Holy Ghost. I, I just sometimes just sit and shake my, my legs because when I look around, I see dead men walking. I see people who are spiritually dead because they don't have this gift. And I'm sorry for them, but it makes me happy for me because I was blind one day and Jesus came through Portia uh, and, and began to speak to me about the power of the Holy Ghost that I had to be born again. And I'm so glad that God gave me ears to hear. Man, if God don't give you ears to hear, all of this stuff rolls off your back like it's not in the Bible. It's that I'm not talking out of the Bible. I'm talking out of my head. Man, if you will listen, you will never regret seeking God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the gift of the Holy Ghost is a matter of life and or death. So you see that we are identified with Christ in his resurrection. And the Holy Ghost, who is the Holy Ghost? Well, God is a spirit. He's a Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is God. 
For those of you who don't know, Jesus is God. And when Jesus died, you know, in the old days, um, when I was small, they used to talk about Uncle Joe dying and his spirit comes back. And they used to say, that's the ghost of Uncle Joe. Well, the spirit of Christ is the spirit. And when his body died, that spirit came back. And it, it's a Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of Christ. That's who he is. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you get Jesus living in you. My brothers and sisters, who would not want to have Christ in you, the hope of glory, the hope of going back to see him, the hope of being with him? I talked to you about eternal damnation. I taught you, those of you who didn't get those lessons, go into my archives and uh, YouTube and, and get them. Just, just type my name up and, and, and type, uh, uh, go on my page and you'll see them. You need to hear that when you leave here without the spirit of Christ, you're going to hell. My God, am I just talking? I'm speaking through the oracles of this word. If you have not the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, you are going to hell. Now, we are looking at times, man, that we can tell that the, the rapture season is all around. God is on his way back. There's nothing that needs to happen. In Ju Jerusalem, in Europe, in the earth, nothing needs to happen before Christ comes back. Christ is waiting on a number, you all. When he gets that number, he's going to crack the sky and pull up everybody that has his spirit. My God, don't you want to go? Look at Matthew 25. In the book of Matthew, verse number 25, verse, uh, chapter 25, verse number one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. As I, said, I call it church folk. I call it wheat and the tear. God say, let them, let them grow together. In the end, I separate them. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Sign of the rapture, you all. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that took, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and sleep. Life went on just like it has been. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him at a time that you think it not. He's coming. He's coming as a thief in the night. Now, you know, if you knew what time the thief was coming, you'd be at the door waiting. But God is saying, live your life as if you're waiting to catch a thief coming into your house in the night. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. When God shut that door, it's closed, you all. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Oh, God. You mean to tell me you're going to be in a church for all of your life and have to hear that message? Jesus saying to you, the door is shut and I know you not because you don't have the spirit of Christ in you and any man that have not the spirit of Christ, Jesus said, 
is none of his. Romans 8 and 9. I'm, I'm just about finished, you all. In Romans 8 and 9, it says this. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, I just want you to know this came out of the Bible, y'all. He is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. My brothers and my sisters, that's your space suit. The Holy Ghost is your space suit. Without him, there is not going to be any quickening. And I tell you this, they look at us because we try to live holy. They look at us because we believe what the Bible says, that a man should repent, should be baptized in Jesus' name for the taking away of his sins and shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. They look at us as we some country fools. They look at us like, you know, you're going to church again. They look at us like, why are you paying all those tithes to the church to keep the lights on, to keep the preacher uh, our lights on? They look at us like we are fools. And I'm going to tell you something. I learned a long time ago. They are right. We are fools. Everybody is a fool. It's who you're a fool for. And we who believe these tenets of God, we are fools for Christ. And when Christ comes back, he's coming back for fools. And he's not coming back for people who are wise. He's not coming back for the noble. He's coming back for those who did not elevate their wisdom and knowledge above the wisdom and the knowledge of God. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of Christ. And the question is, can I be saved without the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And I take you back to John 3 and 5. He says, except a man is born of the water and of the spirit. And my brothers and sisters, they demonstrated the water and the spirit in Acts 2 and 38. Jesus demonstrated the water and the spirit in Acts 10 and 44 through 48. Jesus demonstrated the water and the spirit in Acts the 8th chapter with the, 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 the uh, Sumerians. He demonstrated the water and the spirit in Acts 19 verses one through five. Not only did he tell you, he showed you how to do it. And then he showed you that when you get this Holy Ghost, what's going to happen? Number one, you're going to speak in other tongues. And number two, you're going to have joy bells ringing in your soul. Joy bells, man, I've been saved over 50 years and the joy bells are still ringing loud in my soul. So my brothers and sisters, I can't make you believe what I'm telling you the Bible is saying. But the Bible says that the Holy Ghost is going to seal us. He's going to seal us. He's going to give us, the Holy Ghost is like a, a down payment until... He comes back for us. And if this Holy Ghost is just a portion of what living with Christ is going to be, man, I can't wait. I, I, I'm not even trying to hold on to this life. I, I got a nice family. I got a nice house. I'm enjoying them while I'm here. But when it's time to go, I ain't kicking. I ain't fighting. I'm saying, Lord, here am I. For God says that those who obey not the gospel, he's coming back with a vengeance on you. But he won't come back with a vengeance on me because I saw his word, I heard his word, I obeyed his word, and I'm sitting up here telling you that his word is true. 
My brothers and sisters, I can talk more, but I'm going to stop here. I just wanted you to know that the Holy Ghost is your spiritual connection. The natural man cannot understand the spiritual things of God. You got to trust God's word like we had to. You got to go into prayer like we had to. You got to ask God to open up your understanding. I'm not asking you to do nothing in blind faith. I'm asking you to do it in faith because God will begin to reveal to you that you need to be born of the water and of the spirit. And I tell you this, as I close, to receive the Holy Ghost ain't no problem. You confess your sins. You tell God you're sorry for your sins. If you don't want to get baptized first, you don't even have to get baptized first. It's just the template that God has given us to follow. But after you get the Holy Ghost, you need to be baptized. You've got to be baptized of the water. You have to be born again of the water and the spirit. Those of us who don't have the Holy Ghost, all you need to do, first, you can find a church that teaches these tenets, that the spirit of promise that God has told us in his word that will come. And the way to receive it is just to believe it. Uh, some of us in the old church, we had to tarry. We had to say hallelujah, 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 until God change our tongues and began to speak through us. Some of us will read Acts 2 and 38, just what God said, and look up to God and open up their mouths and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Some of us will take a man of God laying hands on you and, 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 and pronouncing you to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and you can receive it. I went into my bedroom and I talked to God like I'm talking to you. And I asked God, I said, God, if there is a Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues and I need it to be saved, fill me. And I don't want to spend all day in here trying to get it. And man, I said hallelujah a couple of times. And when I opened up my eyes again, I was under the bed speaking in another language. This thing is real. It is true. It is necessary, necessary, and it's for you. My brothers and sisters, take this message. Bring it to your families. You can't make people believe, but you got the spirit of God. They are not listening to you. Don't think that you don't have the words to say because you're correct. You don't. But you got the spirit of God in you that will speak through you and open up their hearts that they too can be some of these foolish people living and walking around here, being fools for God. God bless you all. Keep praying for us in the name of Jesus. Precious Father God, we thank Amen. you for your visitation. We pray, God, that your word did what you have ordained it to do. We give your name the glory and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. God bless each and every one of you and the families that you represent in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. <laughs>